Hello, Frog fans. Welcome to Post Game Beers Podcast, the 100th episode of Post Game Beers. Congratulations to us uh, for sticking with each other that long. That's a, it's, a, it's been a while. Um, we are the Lucky <laughs> Drinking Club. Um, I am Kyle Malloy at Yellum K. Uh, we do not have our master of activity, Jacob Sailors, tonight. He's likely at the nearest casino hammering the frogs for the, uh, for the odds to win the College World Series. Uh, we do have our producer, Crazy Ray Cartwright. We've got our Sultan of Stat, Martin Guerrero, and of course, Garrett Evans. Uh, fellas, this podcast is brought to you by Hell's Half Acre Stadium Goods, our friends over there. They've got some awesome gear. I'm wearing their, their hat right now. It's, uh, it's my favorite. But tonight, we wanted something special. We wanted something great for our 100th episode. And so we are thrilled to welcome um, our first guest of season three, our first guest of uh, the year 2024, um, your state of Illinois Gatorade Player of the Year, Evan Skaug. Evan, uh, welcome to the show. <laughs> uh, thanks for having me, fellas. I, I love being on here. Awesome. Um, well, we are thrilled to kind of talk to you about not only your past, you know, kind of uh, what brought you to TCU, also a little bit about the minor leagues, and then what brought you back. I mean, we're obviously jacked for the season to come up, uh, but you can tell us more about that since you are closer to the team. So, um so tongue in cheek on the intro, you know, 2014 Gatorade player of the year, but I just want to list off a couple of your accomplishments and then we'll kind of go backwards from there. So um, you played 199 games at TCU quite a bit. That's, that's three years worth from 2015 to 2017, dozens of honors, you know, first team and second team, all big 12 from basically everybody that came out with those lists um, in 2017, it was, you were first team, all American per pretty much everybody D one baseball, ABCA, the perfect game, which is kind of, you know, across the board. Uh, you went to World Series each year you were there, uh, which is pretty fun. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. And then uh, my favorite, the Missouri State Bear Killer, uh, that that game that I uh, have ingrained in my head, uh, the, you know, those home runs that you were smacking. So I imagine you look fondly, you know, look back fondly at TCU, but from Kalamazoo, Michigan, how in the world did you get down to Fort Worth? Uh, yeah. I mean, you definitely made me sound better than I was with that intro. Um <laughs> But uh, I got down here by kind of luck of the draw, I guess, being in the right place, right time. Um, didn't really have many offers in high school. Um, and then, you know, I was playing against Alex Young, uh, who was a crosstown rival. And it just so happened that uh, the recruiting coordinator at the time was there and got a couple hits off of Alex. And then as time went down the road, I was like, hey, dude, would you mind putting in a good word? And then it kind of just snowballed from there. Um, and so, I mean, it was far from home, but as soon as I stepped on campus, I felt like it was home. It didn't feel like I was, uh, halfway across the country and it was real easy for mom and dad to get down. Um, I think American was offering a flight every hour on the hour from O'Hare to DFW, but at the same time, I didn't have to worry about some random pop in on the weekends, you know, it's like, all right, well, I know you guys have to fly down here. So, um, but no, it, it felt like home and it was easy for family to get to. And then honestly, the staff and the players made it uh, feel even more like home and like an extended family. For you, I mean, that was back in your, what, 2013, 2012, you were being recruited? Mm, close. I want to say like probably the back half of 12 in the 13, but mainly in 13, I would say, because I was late. I think I... I think I called and committed as they were driving on the bus to or from the Big 12 championship, so probably in May. Nice. Uh, who was the recruiting coordinator back then? Because I know Los, who eventually took over that role, had just joined the staff. Yeah, it was actually uh, it was actually Coach Vitello at the time. Oh, nice. <laughs> I've heard of him. <laughs> He's continued to excel. Is he as angry behind the scenes as he seems in per uh, like on camera? Oh, no, that guy's he's the best. I, you know, one of my one of my good friends, um, you know, does a lot of offseason training in the uh, Nashville, Knoxville area. And he says he hangs out with Coach B all the time. But no, Coach B was the best. He was great. Um, you know, really kind of showed the best sides of TCU and, and you know, was really great to my family and I. So I mentioned a ton of accolades, you know, just from your time at TCU. But when you look back at your college years, what do you think about what what are you remembering and kind of memories that pop to your pop to the top of your head? I would say probably just the people, um, the people um, it's stuff that goes on behind the scenes. I would say that's more important and more memorable, um, you know, with teammates, uh, guys that, you know, we'll sit around and, 
we'll sit around together and, and, you know, share a couple of drinks and we'll just go back and, and tell stories and, and different sides of, you know, who saw what and who's, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, besides all the games and I mean, going to Omaha three times was great. And then all the super regional games that it's just the stuff that's behind the scenes. And I think, you know, when you get a, when you get groups that are so tight, I think that's what makes it the best. When you're on that Omaha run, does it kind of feel like getting to Omaha is so incredibly hard? It's one of the hardest things to do in college sports, but it almost felt easy for y'all there in that run from 14 through 17. I wish it was easy. Um, you know, before I mean, we were, you know, when we were playing, it was before the NIL. So we always had this, you know, team wide joke. It was, you know, play to pay, play to get paid because <laughs> they kept, you know, stocking us up with meal money and all that good stuff. Um, for guys living off campus, it was like rent money. So, um, you know, we always, we were like, Hey, let's, we're, we're going to win. If we don't win, we don't get paid. So, um, that was kind of the biggest thing, but I wish it was easy, man. But we went into, you know, the, the 16 inning game in 15 and then going into A&M in 16, uh, none of it was really easy. We had some scares in a couple of those regionals too. So, um, while it looked easy on the, on the outside, which is great, but man, that we had some, we had some tight. We had some tight situations and, you know, we had a, we had a couple of balls bounce our way, which helped. Speaking of balls bouncing your way, you used to catch Preston Morrison. How many balls have you had to block from Pimo? Man, I tell this to every, I tell this to all the high school pitchers that come in and, you know, they, we talk and Howie and I talked to it at a couple camps or whatever. Um, and I was like, man, I caught this guy. He's one of the best baseball pitchers ever in college baseball. I think I, you know, in the year that I caught him, I think I might've had to catch block uh four or five baseballs but definitely i could count it on one hand yeah you definitely i think he's one of the greatest pitchers of all time in college baseball i think he I should mean, be yeah, in the college wanna, hall of fame if you want to go through uh just a wild set of statistics go through his four-year career and, and look at his numbers i mean from his era to his whip to innings pitched i mean it's absurd now y'all played a m all those years on those runs to the college world series was there legit beef with a m like did you, was there a rivalry within the dugout with them mm, i don't i don't know if necessarily think there was like legit you know like a legit beef between the two teams uh, in between the dugouts but i mean once you get into those high stakes scenarios and you know once you know we ended their season a couple of times so each time it got a little bit more heightened as all right, we're going to do it again or, or, you know, are they going to, they wanted to not have them, their season be ended by us. So I think that's where it came out from. It's just like, we just kept ending their season over and over again. So I would definitely say that that's probably why it seems so tense, but I mean, just in any of those big time games, you get those emotions um, no matter who's playing together. Speaking of big time games, uh, were you part of that uh, NC state crazy comeback? Yeah, <laughs> and I talk honestly, about balls bouncing the right way. Yeah, I honestly just need to go back and watch that somehow. I got to find it and watch it because I, you know, it's some of those, some of those I don't even I don't even know how it happened. I just need to actually see it and and be like, wow, that actually happened. You can uh, skip past the first seven innings. There's not yeah, yeah just go right to the eighth inning. <laughs> no doubt. I just need to watch it again. I I don't. I have no idea how that happened. I have no idea how we actually won that game. But I mean, you know, you talk about you gotta you gotta be good and you gotta be you gotta you gotta be peaking at the right time, but then you also have to have a little bit of luck on your side. From the comments, uh our good friend Jacob Sailors says uh Evan Skaug, most clutch ground ball to third base of all time. <laughs> <laughs> the ground ball heard around the world. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, Evan, you were drafted, obviously, in your third year. But before that, in 2014, you were drafted at a high school to the Washington Nationals. And I, I wonder, do you ever regret, you know, not taking that leap just so you could play alongside Bryce Harper? Uh, well, at that time, I wasn't thinking about it. But, you know, I had a couple phone calls uh, throughout the draft process go out of high school but i mean again like i can't compliment the staff that was here at the time about educating me of what it looks like on the other side um and i definitely don't regret you know even if it was a chance to play with harper but um i you know i don't think you can really put a a dollar sign on the experiences that you get in a school like this 
yeah, you know, not only a chance to play with Harper, I think Perk was with the uh, Nationals around that time. Mm. Around that window, I think he would have been. Yeah. Uh, Evan, I want to ask you about your time in Kannapolis and uh, Winston-Salem. And I was hoping to see if maybe you had any funny stories or, or what have you about your time uh, with those clubs. Before we got off TCU, uh, we were, I was thinking before we got on about some of my favorite plays of yours. And uh, I found this one video that came up and it rem- reminded me of this, this play here. And I was hoping I could play this for you and just kind of take you back here and get your thoughts on it really quick. <laughs> Let's see it. All right, let me see if I can get it pulled up real quick. <laughs> Just linebacker that kid, bro. <laughs> right in the crotch. Oh, no. <laughs> well, uh- Hey, I've been on the I've been on the other side of some of those. Um, I remember it my freshman year at USC, I got run over so bad by a guy that was playing on the football team too, and I got knocked out of the dirt circle. And I was seeing stars, and I, you know, I got a like a, I got some treatment like the next week, at, and we were at home, and someone was like, "Did you get in a car wreck?" And I was like, "No." <laughs> Um, and so when I had the chance to do it to the other guy, I was a hundred percent in. I wasn't going to get run over again. Absolutely, man. That was almost as aggressive as aggressive as the Kevin Crone tag. Like, you know, like you, when you have the mask on, you're already in an advantage. So you know, as long as you don't get called for it, you're good in my books. <laughs> that is awesome, man. I love that video. All right, so Garrett mentioned minor league stuff. Um, you know, based on your expectations kind of going into the minors, uh, did it actually match up to what you were hoping for, what you were expecting to, for your time there? Um, the minor leagues is uh, – it's getting – it's come a long way since I started, um, and I know that the guys before me would say, you know, twice fold. Um, the minor leagues is is definitely uh, – it's a grindy spot, but, man, it's, it's fun. You know, like the first – yeah, I came from from here, and I was we were eating Hofbrau before every Friday night game, and then I got into pro ball. And my first meal was boiled hot dogs and Neapolitan ice cream. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, it's it's different style of game because you play at the time when I got in, it was you played seven days a week, um, and you know you finish a four game series, you get on a bus and you can drive to any city on the eastern eastern you know like seaboard. We had to go from. Kannapolis all the way up to Jersey Shore sometimes. So it is a, it's a different ball game, uh, but it was a lot of fun. I came across a lot of like really cool people, um, people from all sorts of, you know, cultures. So it's definitely a unique, um, it's a lot more unique sometimes than, than a college, uh, you know, clubhouse. Um, but it was, it was different. It was like a shift because everything, you know, in the big 12 and the, you know, the Omaha, every, the SEC, anywhere that we had played, you know, you'd go down to, you know, the low A, high A, it's a little bit different. Some places are different. Some places are, you know, some places are nicer than others, but I mean, it's, it was a little bit of a, a shock. I was like, Whoa, this is, this is different. Um, but I enjoyed my time, no doubt. Um, you know, from from whether it be the games, uh, you know, I had a couple of good couple of good moments in pro ball and or whether it be just like spending time with the guys. We we used to do karaoke on long bus trips sometimes like it's different. It's it's a fun style. Um, it's definitely more independent. You're kind of on your own. Um, it's not really like a team feel because teams change all the time, um, whereas here uh, or any other college program, it's pretty much set in stone, you know, once the spring rolls around. Did you, you know? I think that was the biggest thing. You know, I talked to Halen about it, um, about his time, you know, coming up through the minor leagues. And he said the biggest thing for him was it's not about winning. It's just it's just about development. Yeah. The coach could care less about wins or losses. It's really it's really true. I mean, obviously, like it's a lot more fun when you're winning. You know, play 140 some games. It's a lot more fun when you win more than you lose. Um <laughs> But, you know, the, the end goal for everybody there, even some of the coach, like even most of the coaches is to get to the big leagues. So, um, you know, I, there was days where we would get beat 20 to zero, but, you know, somebody gets three or four hits and it's a good day, you know, like, 
it's it's a lot different and uh there's not really any repercussions because you just got to wake up and, and do it again um did you notice a divide between guys that went to college and had that experience of being a really close team to just kind of maybe going straight to the minors or or maybe not having that maybe a junior college kind of you know coming up in a different path um I mean, I wouldn't say that there's a divide on winning and losing, but I mean, you can definitely tell who who goes to college, who doesn't, um, just based on you know. There's some, and obviously it's it's different with each individual, but for the most part, you know, especially in the lower levels, you can you know you really can pick out who went to college, who didn't, um, just from small little you know interactions. But once you start climbing the ladder, it gets to a point where it's like, all right. You know, everybody here is is seasoned at some level, right? Uh, socially, more so. Um, but for the most part, uh, yeah, you can tell early, but later on, you, you really can't. So our guy Jackson Day, a friend of ours, he's joined the show. He's asking some. Uh, he's he's in the comment section. A question he has is, um, he asked, uh, "What did you say to get Chattanooga to throw at you four times in 2022?" Like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I said anything. I honestly, I don't quite remember that. <laughs> um, so maybe it's just a short term memory thing. I must have developed that somewhere along the lines. But if they hit you uh, in the head a few times, then that's yeah, yeah. gone. <laughs> CTE. <laughs> Man, I got hit in the head a lot. You know, like I forget some of the little details. All right. So I need to confirm this. Baseball Reference says that you pitched uh, last year. Oh, one point yeah. one innings with the Charlotte Knights. I'm going to read off your stats here. You ended with a a uh, life ERA of 20.25. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, five hits, three earned runs, one walk, and one hit by pitch. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, like the first – I got out there for the first appearance, and I had a zero, flat zero. And I was like <laughs> – I took a picture of my stats right away. I sent it to all my – I sent it to some of my closest pitching friends, and I was like, career zero ERA, baby. Like, I'm locked in. Um, and then – I got in. There was another game where I like the I, probably the next week. Honestly, we were going through a stretch, but I got in there and you know we were playing against the Miami AAA team, and uh, they had a big league guy rehabbing with him. So you know his spot came up in the lineup. He was leading off the inning, and I was on the mound. So he's like, "I'm out of here. See you, fellas." Uh, and so they brought this guy off the bench, and he was pissed. And so I threw one at like 40 miles an hour, and he just totally leaned in. Um, totally leaned in and I had the hit by pitch and then it was like Homer rocket, rocket, rocket. And I was like, man, get me out of here. Not sure if you caught that. Uh, looks like we have Kelsey Skaug. I don't know if there's any relation there, uh, between you and Kelsey, <laughs> but, uh, she said, I want to know his favorite home run of all time. Yeah. That's my wife who's sitting about 10 <laughs> feet away on the couch. Um, <laughs> She's kind enough to let me do it in the living room, uh, you know, with the, this podcast. I didn't have to get secluded into a, into a small room. So I would say probably my favorite home run of all time would probably be the Big 12 championship um, against Oklahoma State in 2016. I hit it. We, we had. Yeah, we we were we were battling with Oklahoma State. It was getting a little chippy. They brought in a lefty. I hit a homer. Um came into the dugout and as soon as I got done high-fiving somebody, you know, Luke can hit one off the hotel. So, I mean, it was just a fun experience. <laughs> there were some cool bat flips involved. Um, we kind of got a really cool, calm and collected, hey, don't do that again. Um, but it was a, it was probably one of my favorites. You know, <laughs> before we leave uh, your minor league career, if you could go back and do it all over again, what's something – what's one thing you would do differently? Uh, just in the minor leagues? Yeah. I would probably listen to a lot less people because um, there's, you know, a ton of different opinions coming at you from left and right. More so just like, uh, hey, I got here for a reason. I'm going to go, you know, do my thing. You know, somebody doesn't need to put their stamp on me. I think I can grind this one out. Um, but that would probably be my thing. Just kind of have – I mean, some of the best players I've ever you know, played with are kind of like, okay, they listen, but then they don't really listen. And they just go do their thing. Yeah, um, I was going to so say, like, did you get that from a former uh, TCU slugger? <laughs> Dude, that guy, I mean, yeah, that that's – he. so, I mean, there's a couple that I've I've talked to, but, I mean, Carp – I think you're talking about Carpenter, but, yeah, he's uh, – he he was always like, man, just go in there and, and, and do your own thing. And not, like, do your own thing and not be coachable, but 
at the same time, just know that you're really good because you're here at this level. You know, you don't have to have, you don't have to please everybody along the way. And so I think that's where I got caught up a little bit, but you know, it just wasn't in the, wasn't in the cards. And then uh, here in the uh, comments, we've got Griffin Benson, and he wants to know why you would always try to backpick him at first. <laughs> so this is one of my good buddies. Um, he always told me that we always had a running bet every time we played each other in Kannapolis. Um, you know, he he was like, man, I'm going to steal a base on you. I'm going to steal a base on you. I was like, you're slow. You are slow as molasses in the winter. <laughs> and so I just kept picking him just to annoy him, honestly, because he's a big guy. So I was like, I'm just going to keep throwing at throwing behind you because you're slow and I'm just going to annoy you. But I mean, I think he, the only reason he would get on the first was, you know, he would walk and he would throw the ball to him and he just couldn't, he couldn't get struck. He couldn't get on base, but um, when I was behind the plate, but you know, that's just, that's just me having fun with him. From, uh, from minor league baseball, you know, what, what was it that kind of, what brought you back here with Brian? What made you want to come back and how is that transit? What was that transition like coming back to TCU? Um, I, well, I wanted to come back because I kind of had promised everybody along the way that, that I was going to come back and finish my degree. Hmm. Um, and so, you know, with the help of TCU and some of the, you know, like the White Sox have like a, they like minor leagues have like a continuation of education program. So with the help of those two to, you know, get in and pay for school and not come out of my own pocket, um, I was just like, you know, I need to, I want to have a real career, I guess, you know, playing baseball is a real career, but, um, you know, do something to make some money and, and support, you know, my small family. And, you know, I think the best way to do that was finishing the degree. Um, I didn't really want to go to, you know, an online school or somewhere that I didn't have any ties. I mean, I spent three years here, so I was like, I got to come back and finish. Um, and the transition for me was super easy. You know, I had previously talked to, uh, uh, Coach Los about it, and I was like, "Hey, man, when I'm when I'm done playing, hopefully it's a long time, but I want to come back and you know give this coaching thing a shot." Um, so you know, as soon as I found out that you know I was moving on, taking the next step, I you know I think I called my parents, I called my wife, and then I called uh, Coach Los, and I was like, "Hey, man, I, do you have a spot for me?" And he's like, "Yep, we'll see you in August." And I was like, "Awesome!" Wow. When you were here at uh, TC, were you on full scholarship the entire time? Uh, no, not many. I think maybe like the only one was like Lucan, but you know, that's, you know, it's pretty fair. Makes pretty sense. Fair. Uh, uh yeah. what's the tuition difference between, uh, back then it just in 2016 to now in 2024. Crazy. Oh, I can't gosh, believe how expensive yeah. it is, but <laughs> I mean, it's worth it. I like it. I mean, it's, you love the place. It's crazy expensive, but you know, it's worth it. Hey, Evan. Uh, can can you explain what happened in 2017? Like what clicked for you that led to you hitting 20 bombs in a year? I, I don't think anybody thought that that was going to happen at TCU, you know, ever since they uh, dead in the bats. I mean, I didn't – if you told me at the start of like – after the first month that I was going to hit 20 homers that year, I would probably told you you were crazy um, <laughs> because I couldn't hit water if I fell out of the boat to start the year. Um, but I would say that, you know, it's – it was a lot to do with Coach Mo at the time. He was great, you know, getting me back to where I needed to be. Um, and then just a lot of, you know, for that first month was just a lot of like, okay, just being patient. You know, we had a lot of great resources that we could talk to. Um, but Coach Mo was the one that really got me back um, to where I needed to be. And I think it was a Tuesday game against UTA where I hit a homer to left. And I was like, okay, I'm in a better spot. And then just kind of went from there. But yeah, I would I would credit that mostly to Coach Mo, um, getting me back to where I needed to be. He was always, you know, he and I had a close relationship, still do. Uh, but he knew me, he knew me and my swing better than better than anybody. So you never considered calling up and uh, trying to be a Buckeye, huh? Yeah. Well, my allegiances are here first and foremost. You know, like. <laughs> Started, I got to finish the degree from here. That's the big yeah. thing. Like, and I, I, you know, I would love to, you know, work with Coach Mo, um, mm -hmm. but this is home right now. I yeah. can't leave home and don't really, I mean, I moved out of the winners once. I don't know if I want to go back again. Um, <laughs> so I enjoy, you know, except for next week, I enjoy when it's like 60 degrees in, Dece in December and January. Mm -hmm. 
Well, just uh, wait till Monday. You'll get a little taste of uh, I home. I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> just in time for the uh, start of practice. Man. Right? Um, I had to sign off for a second. I hope I didn't miss it. But how how did the decision come for you and Brian Howard to kind of join at the same time? Do you guys were you guys talking in the background, or was that kind of just uh, a coincidence? We talked yeah. about that. Yeah, okay. we did. But I mean, I can I can lighten on on Howard too. Howard and I called each other, and we're like, Howie called me, and he goes, "Hey, I heard a rumor." And I was like, "What rumor did you hear?" He goes, "I heard you want to go coach." And I was like, uh, "Yeah." He's like, "Well, I don't know if we'll both be able to do it at the same time. Like, what's what's the deal? What's gonna happen?" And I was like, "I, I don't know. We'll figure out a way." Um, but you know, you know, Coach Los and, and uh, Jeremiah found a way for us to both be in at the same time. Um, and you know, once we found out that we were doing it together, we were like, "Great!" Because you know, if we screw up at practice, we're like, we don't want anyone to know, but we can go in there and 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 chop it up after practice. So having Howard there, you know, with me is great. Uh, you know, it's like I know a lot of the players will or even some of the coaches, they're like, man, you guys just bicker like an old married couple sometimes. <laughs> but, um, but I mean, we we picked up like we had never left being in the same clubhouse. And, you know, we love being in there together. Keeps it light, keeps it fun. You know, we can go in there and be like, dude, how bad did I screw up today? And then we just get to poke fun at that person all day. So it's great. <laughs> You know, a lot of people like reliving the good old days, uh, you know, back in their playing. You and Brian get to go and actually relive that. Yeah, I know. Honestly, we're pretty we're pretty we're pretty excited for the road trips. We're like, dude, we get to do it all over again. This is great. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be fun. It's uh, it's definitely different, but um, I wouldn't trade it. It's been it's been great so far. Now, I do have a. Uh, so you're notoriously covered in pine tar as a catcher. What does pine tar taste like? You know, I wish I had the answer for you. It changes. It changes all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, like people would be like, man, your hands are dirty. How can you like you need to wash your hands before you, you know, eat with this fork? And I was like, well, I've washed them six times and the fork isn't going to get anywhere. Like I'm not going to you know, lick the handle of the fork. So you just let me be. But um, I never actually tasted pine tar. Um, but yeah, I've heard it does change from season to season. <laughs> We've got a, a question here in the chat. Uh, Jackson Day was curious um, what the Cape Cod League was like for you. And you've had any stories from your time in the Cape Cod League. I probably have one of the best pranks of all time that was go. pulled on that was pulled on me. Okay. Um, so we had just finished up the season and I was the last one to arrive to the to the team. And you know, there was three guys from Ole Miss, and one of the guys was pretending that he was deaf. And you know, the whole the whole team was in on it. The whole front office, the the staff, even some of the host families were were in on it. So I got there and I was looking like a fool, right? Like, you know, trying to like interact with this guy. Um, but what really sold it to me was like, they were like, Hey man, if you go have a mountain visit, you know, don't put your glove in front of your face. Right. Cause he reads it. He reads lips. And I was like, okay, great. <laughs> so we're in the ninth inning of a game and it's a close game. I think we're up one and I go out there. I have a mountain visit with him. I totally forget. I put my hand up and he like swats the glove away from my face. And I was like, Whoa, like this isn't a joke. Like they're not actually pranking me. This is a real deal. So, you know, a couple of weeks go by. I think he, they, they played the prank for like two, three, maybe even close to a month. But I got in there and they had a kangaroo court and the coach stood up. He read my name. and I was like, shoot, what I do? He's like, you have a double max fine. And then the kid stands up. He goes, I'm not deaf, you idiot. And I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> so everyone was in on it and they sold it. Like, I mean, it was the most unbelievable thing ever. Um, best prank I've ever been a part of. And I just happened to be the victim. But <laughs> it was great. Um, that's, that's great. Commitment to the bit there about those guys. I mean, I'm, that guys would go behind him and yell like in the back of his ear when he wasn't paying attention and he wouldn't flinch. I, I don't know how he did it. You know, that's pretty cool. You know, you go up to the Cape Cod League and you have a host family. Are you staying in some nice houses there? I would um, imagine yeah, there. We, we stayed in a, we had a, my host family was great. I still keep in touch with them this day. Like there's three boys and, you know, the parents were awesome. You know, they were super helpful with everything. We had a blast. Um, uh, so just awesome family. I know my my parents got to come up and hang out with them, but you know we still keep in touch to this day. Um, they're awesome people. 
All right. So, Evan, you're, you're back at TCU. Obviously, Sarlos has been there the entire time uh, since you were there and, and before and after. But so you're familiar with his style. But I'm, I'm wondering if you noticed any changes from the program when you kind of walked in, uh, obviously not having Schloss as, as the head coach. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would say that, you know, everything looks and runs pretty smooth um, and, and pretty similar. Like the culture is still the same or pretty close to the same. Uh, I mean, obviously, like Coach Los and, and the guys that um, have been there since I've left, I mean, they put their own unique individualized, you know, bits and pieces in. And I think it just kind of fits into his style. Um, but as far as like the core principles, you know, the selfless excellence and energy, I think it's, you know, it's dead on. Like the the players that are coming through the doors are the same type of just great human beings, you know, grindy, gritty ball players. Um, and it's, it's very, I think it's very similar. Um, you know, the program runs, you know, it's family first. Um, and I think that, you know, while it changes very sim like very slightly, you know, based on individuals and, and, and who's in, you know, who's in the offices behind closed doors. I mean, I think that, you know, Coach Los is the same, the same person from the time I was there till now, just a, I mean, one of a kind individual, um, you know, his family, his whole family, just grade A elite people and, and a person that I like to work for and, and a, a guy that I know that players love to play for. You know, since you've been on uh, campus now, how excited were you to work with uh, Carson Bowen? I mean, it's great. Yeah, we had a, we had an opportunity to get to link up uh, before last season. Just, I mean, I was still, you know, you know, sharpening my skills. And so I was just kind of like working with them. It was just people for me to work with. Um, but it's great. I mean, I like just catching in general. So it doesn't really matter who it is. Um, you know, Carson just happens, Carson, Carson happens to be a, you know, a pretty good ball player himself. Um, but any of the guys in the catching room, it's just, it's great to just go to work. And what's the biggest thing Carson still needs to work on? Mm. <laughs> I'm going to yell this at him during the games, by the way. I'm going to yell it at David. <laughs> Man, I, you know what? It's one of those things where it's like, I don't, I think he, I think he is who he is. He's a great player and I'm not going to, I'm not going to change much. No, I'm not going to, he, he had an unbelievable season last year. So there's no need for me to come in here and be like, you got to do it all over again. So um, I'm just excited to see him play. Uh, you know, I'm excited to see him in person. I haven't seen him play in person yet. So, you know, I just want to see, I want to all these highlights that I've seen from him, you know, thrown from just crazy slots and, and just the way he plays. I'm excited to see it in person. Obviously, um, you know, being the podcast dedicated to TCU baseball, we're pretty high on the Frogs this year, but that's starting to kind of trickle out into um, some other, you know, venues, whether it's D1 or, you know, other guys that are kind of starting to put out their rankings um, already. Um, for We know that Omaha is the expectation, you know, that's never going to probably change uh, for a while. But knowing that, do you, what expectations, I guess, do you have of this team? Maybe it's with a specific player. Maybe it's, maybe it's with a – a position group, um, or maybe it's with everybody. Is there something outside of like, yes, we want to go to Omaha. We want to win the whole thing. You know, what, what are you kind of hoping for and expecting for 2024? Um, yeah. I mean, I think this comes from, you know, like this isn't my own personal philosophy. I think it's a philosophy of the program, but you know, there is a lot of, from what I've seen, there is a lot of preseason, you know, chatter about what's going on and how the frogs are supposed to be. But, you know, the big thing is that can be pretty distracting. So, um, I would say my expectation is for them to play like they got left off the list, practice like they got left off the list, um, because, you know, if you're number five in the preseason, well, you know, it doesn't really matter at the end. Right. So, I mean, our, I think that, you know, my expectation for them, which is, you know, what, you know, we set as a standard is, is kind of a staff is that they just show up every day like it's opening day and play like it's their last like their last game. Don't eat the rat poison. The, exactly. Don't take the cheese. You know, along those same lines, what's your expectations for yourself this year? Um, my expectations would be to learn a lot more, um, you know, and, and make sure that I'm getting the information that I need to get to players and I'm, I'm absorbing the information that I need on my end to do my job the best. Um, I definitely don't want to be the weak link in this chain. 
Um, so trying to just gather all this information on the run uh, and, and just kind of give back however I can, whether it's just being an extra set of hands or, or doing something where I can provide value for this team. You just got to be a little bit stronger than than Bihau, and I think you'll be okay. Then they're going to focus on him. You know, <laughs> I think. Yeah, I think I, I think I can handle that one. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, all right. So we know you, you mentioned NIL uh, briefly. Uh, you said you didn't benefit from it. Uh, I, I, I appreciate that, you know, for um, official recording purposes uh, <laughs> you know, that you didn't you didn't take any money. Uh, but are, are you jealous of these guys that they got to kind of try something different? Are you are you excited for them? Do you get a you know, they throw you a slice of pizza every now and then? What's the deal? Yeah, man, I always joke around with them. I'm like, hey, man, like, you know, being a student doesn't pay, you know, you know. <laughs> You guys got extra food, throw it my way. Um, no, but I think it's good for these kids, especially, you know, I, I don't think there's anything crazy that, I mean, at least to my knowledge, that's going on in, in college baseball. Um, but at least to help, you know, with the insufficient amount of scholarships, um, giving guys opportunities that they may not be, ha be able to have without the NIL. Um, you know, I think, it's a, I think it's great because whether it's just somebody that wants to take you out to lunch and buy you a lunch, you know, you can do that now. Right. So, so I think that's, that's awesome. Or are you just, cause before, I mean, I couldn't, you know, go out with anybody like in a, like a booster, or a, you know, like a diehard fan and have lunch and have them pay for it. I had to pay for it. So um, I think it's great for these kids. I, I mean, I think that, you know, ours, I don't know a whole lot, but from what I've heard from the guys, like our staff is taking great care of them and these guys are getting a lot of opportunities. Right. So I just hope that, you know, you see the college, the college football stuff where you just get these ridiculous numbers thrown at you. But I think they'll find a way to taper that in, you know, to where these kids have that money for the future. But, you know, at least with baseball, it's like, hey, there's a need. There's a need because we can't we don't have 35, 40 scholarships. We just got 11.7. So you got to find a way to help these kids pay for school. And not now when you when you say nothing crazy is going on in college, baseball, you're excluding the SEC, right? Yeah, at least from my knowledge. You know? <laughs> Man, they will – they throw down some cash. I haven't seen – like, at least from my knowledge, I haven't seen, like, the, the several million dollar deals yet. But, um, you know, I think, like, the like the block tee and the flying tee are doing a great job getting money to uh, some of these guys. And I don't, I don't have all the information. But from my end, it seems like we're starting to get some money back to these guys. Yeah, I think uh... – the biggest one I've heard, what maybe Martin can confirm, is Maui Ahuna got close to almost a million to go from Kansas to Tennessee last year. Hmm. Talk nothing, to a guy would tell him. Nothing is confirmed. <laughs> I don't know if he got a single cent. <laughs> <laughs> no, Martin, you were saying you were saying that just on this last pod. That was we literally got a, Jacob saying. All that. right, we but, got a couple yeah. uh, quick questions um, in the in the comments here, Mitchell Bartko. Uh, thanks, Mitchell, for joining. What's the coolest upgrade you've seen to Lupton? I don't know if you have seen, but uh, since you graduated. And and maybe a better question, what would you like to see added next? Mm, the coolest upgrade to Lupton since I've graduated. Whew, that's a tough one. Um, man, I think uh, like it was it was here when I was here, but the like the food that these guys can get now like these guys are getting like some chipotle and and like the the spread that they, these guys are getting like it's pretty elite but um i really do like the turf skirt that goes all the way out to the foul poles i think that's awesome it's great uh but it's hard to take away some of the stuff like these guys like you can't take away the right field patio line or even the stuff in in left so um, you know, I think that's like classic staples that I would prefer over some brand new stuff sometimes. Do you like that uh turf skirt whenever you're catching, you know, the slide back there, you know, chasing a Preston Morrison pass ball? Oh, yeah. I mean, never had to do it. So <laughs> here's a question here. It says, uh, what's Evan's favorite restaurant in Fort Worth? If you're going to lunch, are you a are you a wing Wednesday guy? Where are we going? What's the man? Menu? I tell you what, in the fall. In the fall, Coach Howard and I, we probably paid for Chipotle's light bills for the entire semester. <laughs> um, and so, I mean, 
Chipotle is probably like number one, but you know, I like, uh, I like a, a little Italian restaurant. It's called Piola. Uh, it's in the Camp Bowie area. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty elite. Nice. Put that in my notes. Uh, not a question, but a comment from Connor Simmons, lifelong horde, lifelong Horn Frog fan here actually named my dog Scaug after Evan came through TCU. Thank you, Connor. <laughs> it's funny because Evan named his dog Connor. So that's crazy. Exactly. Um, um, another comment from our good friend Bradley says uh, Hagen Smith's getting over four hundred to play at Arkansas. All that money just to lose to TCU, man. <laughs> you just you hate to see it. Um. So walk us through a day in your life. Is it is it much different than when you were on campus? You know, going to classes, going to practice, that sort of thing. Uh, um, yeah, a little bit. I mean, it depends on the day, but you know, I usually uh, I usually wake up. You know, uh, my wife and I have been going in and getting in the gym, trying to, you know, not playing anymore. So I got to find a way not to get you know too chunky, right? So, new year, new you, right? Exactly, right? Yeah. So uh, and then from there, you know, we usually going to either the office for a, for a meeting or, um, go to class. Uh, you know, class is no different. I thought I'd be the old guy sitting in the back, but all the young kids run to the back. So I usually, I'm just right back in the front three rows. Like I left, um, and then head straight over, you know, check in with all the coaches, see what needs to be set up, see what needs to be done for the day, go through practice. And then it's home, cook dinner and knock out homework. So, Man, homework stinks. Never missed that part, but uh, we're back at it. You know, before we uh, get you out of here for the evening, let's go back to your playing days. Was it a favorite ballpark to play in on the road? Mm. Does it have to be? I love playing at Kansas. You know, it's shocking. What? Yeah. No, that's a high school ballpark. No one, no one exactly. says that. Exactly, because – I mean, I hit a lot of homers there, and I really like that part. Um, but I would say that we played at a lot of cool stadiums. We played at uh, we played at the Dodgers Stadium. Uh, we played at Minute Maid, which was fantastic. Um, I think uh, let's see, you, we played UCLA. That was a great spot. You know, we went to some historic spots. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's got to, it's got to, I mean, from a personal, like, hey, I played the best year. I, it's got to be Kansas. You, be. Have you seen the new ballpark in Stillwater yet? No, I'm pretty excited yeah. because I heard it's an absolute monstrosity. Yeah. How does, um, I mean, you've played in College Station, right? What is it, Bluebell? Yeah, Bluebell was fun. I mean, I've never seen, yeah. I've never seen that many people leave a baseball stadium that fast. So that was fun. <laughs> yeah. With the, with the bubble guns in their pockets. <laughs> that was fun. Oh, the yeah. bubbles, man. That place is loud. That place is so loud. I couldn't hear myself think when they scored their first run and we weren't supposed to win there. And I was like, what did we just get ourselves into? <laughs> uh, but then at the end it was, it was, that place got real quiet. So it was fun. You know, y'all play UCLA this year. Has Coach Bruce brought his uh, national title ring around the offices? I gotta ask him to see it. It might be in his office, and I just haven't looked. But I gotta, I gotta ask to see it. <laughs> Whenever you're on the road, do you have a fa uh, who is your favorite roommate? Um, it's got it. I roomed with Lucan one year, and that's probably it has to be my favorite. Lucan was best roommate. <clears throat> And, and the on worst. The flip side, yeah. Who was the worst roommate? <laughs> Who are you rolling your eyes at every time you saw y'all's names? We paired? promise not to at them directly on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Um, we see we had year long roommates. So my freshman year it was Jeremy Fanyon. Then my sophomore year it was Lucan. And I can't. I think it might have been Lucan again. Or no, I think I had. I might have had Humphreys my junior year, but I'm not sure. Everybody was, we, we were all pretty good about roommates. I mean, the only, the weirdest thing is like Fanyon used to do push-ups at night. He used to just like, it'd be like 10 o'clock at night and he used to just rep out like 50 push-ups. And I was like, dude, you're insane. Shirtless you in front of that body mirror. Take some pictures. I was, they like, have. <laughs> I was like, dude, you're absolutely insane. Why, why, how could you possibly want to do push-ups right now? That, that flip phone, that flip phone camera. Yeah, he's got, got some, gotta, gotta got some do mileage. for Facebook. <laughs> uh question from Bodog in the chat. Did Evan have to learn Spanish to communicate with any of the pitchers in the minors besides sign language, of course? Um, I did 
come conversational a little bit in Spanish. You know, it was a lot of most of it was slang and bad words, but um, I did I did try to learn some Spanish. Um, you know, I think it's those guys came over, you know, they come over at 16, 17, 18 years old. So sometimes they're a little like uh, hesitant to speak English, you know, because they don't want to get made fun of and, you know, you don't want to get laughed at. So sometimes I would just go out there and I would just speak Spanish and look like a fool and they would laugh at me and then they would teach me and then they would start speaking English to me. Um, so it was an easy, I mean, you, you got to because half the staff and half the team usually is is Latin American. So, um, you know, it's a tough thing, but, you know, those guys are for the most part willing to like teach you some stuff. That's cool. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? And I think that doesn't get talked about enough. Just how hard that must be. I mean, you sign, you know, a, a pro deal whenever you're as soon as you turn 16, right? And then you're usually in the Dominican and before you come over stateside, but that's gotta be so daunting. Yeah, I mean, I I don't I got to go to one of the academies and man, it's like makes you thankful for the resources and facilities you have here, but it's a tough thing. I know a lot of the, like a lot of kids struggle, um, you know, even with just this, like the simple thing, like food, like the food is so much different. Um, so uh, it's a tough deal uh, either way, whether you're coming from America or the, or, you know, Latin American countries, but they definitely have a little bit extra with that English on the plates. Um, Chloe glass. Not sure if that's a friend of yours. Uh, what's chef Scow cooking up for dinner tonight? Yeah, I actually did a, uh, I did a bone in ribeye. Oh, um, oh, oh man. Smoked it on the, smoked it on the pit boss at two 30 till I got to an internal like one twenty seven, and then little sear had a little garlic butter on the side. So it's usually you can, if you're not, if I'm not at a baseball field, you can find me somewhere around a smoker or in a kitchen. Hell yeah. Speaking of language. Uh, that's Martin's language. That sounded delicious. Yeah, I mean, it was great. You know, <laughs> it's, a, it's an easy way to keep a happy wife is learn how to cook. So yeah. I, I, I found a way to do that. Excellent. Uh, Jackson Day, ask Evan what it was like obliterating LSU's franchise at the Shriners in 2017. Man, we, we had a, I always like playing against LSU. We had a good record against them. And I got a lot of buddies that, you know, from Pro Bowl that went to the SEC. And every time we we would get into these heated debates about who's better, SEC, Big 12, SEC, Big 12. And I just had to show them our record against the, you know, the SEC. So um, I just we, – we love playing the SEC because our fans – you know, when we won, the fan base got so excited about us beating the SEC. So. Except Speaking Florida. Shriners in uh, Florida. 2017. Yeah, yeah, Florida, you know, that, that was a tough one. Uh, speaking of Shriners in 2017, what was the uh, A&M game like? Uh, you know, coming back, what was it, nine to or ten to five in the ninth inning? That was you another. Guys, that was another marathon game. If yeah, I remember dude, correctly. Yeah, what, right? two o'clock yeah, in like, the morning. Yeah, it was one of those things where you got like to the tenth or eleventh inning, and you're like, oh boy, here we go again. Like we're locked in for another. Like just sit here. We could be here for twenty two innings. So, uh, yeah, we were we were like uh, in the dugout. We're like, oh man, here it goes again. Um, <laughs> but no, nah, I mean it's great. Those. Honestly, those those sixteen inning games, like you forget what happens in like innings four through fourteen, and then you know you're like, okay, I can actually breathe again. But honestly, those games, it's love to win them. But when they're over, you're like, whoa, like I needed a breather. Like this is does, exhausting. How does it make you feel during those marathon games? You know, you're back there grinding behind the plate all those innings. And then you, you talk to your good buddy, Brian Howard, who's like, Oh yeah, I went back, took a shower, <laughs> kicked it in the clubhouse for a little bit and then came out here and saw what's up. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, like that's the thing. I'll never let any pitcher tell me that they're, you know, that like they're too exhausted. I'm like, you, you threw for like seven innings and then you were done and we were here for the next nine. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, dude, it's we sometimes, another it's whole ass game. <laughs> sometimes it's frustrating when you see those guys that, they're just like juice full of energy and they're trying to get you like going. You're like, dude, I need five minutes. Like I need to breathe. And then I need to just rest. You guys have been here yelling your butts off, but you just give me a minute. Dude, how are the knees after a game like that? Uh, You know, college, not too bad. You know, it started at the end of pro ball. The knees start to you get a little mileage on them. Cartilage uh, isn't there where it used to be. 
Uh, yeah, we got, you know, I get a little, you know, I start to feel when the cold weather comes in on one side, you know, <laughs> no, I'm kidding, but they're a little <laughs> creaky. They're a little creaky. <laughs> um, felt last, last few questions before you get out of here, fellas, anything else? Um, I'll save them for the next time we have, uh, Mr. Scowg on. Sounds good. Maybe he and uh, Bihau can jump on together and, and battle it out on air. Um, I mean, I, that could be that could be a that could be a tall task, you know, handling us two. But yeah, I think I'll talk to Howie. I'll see what I can do. No, it's um, just wind you up and let you go. <laughs> we, don't, exactly we can right. we can sign out. That'd be fun. Yeah. Well, I'll just hang up and listen, man. Um, I you know obviously we can't tell you how excited we are for the season. Thirty six days. I don't know if you've been following the countdown, but. You know, we're, we're counting every day uh, ready for the for this team to start. So I'm sure you're pumped as well to uh, be out there with the guys and and work. I mean, a little bit different um, on the field, but uh, we're excited to see what you guys do. And uh, we really appreciate your time tonight, Evan. Thanks for joining Absolutely. us. Absolutely. We uh, be out there trying to fire these guys up and get it, doing my part to get them ready to go for you guys. But I appreciate you having me on. It was a blast. See you soon. We're going to do frogs. our part in the stands, crushing <laughs> beers. Hey, crush a couple for me. That, that's all I got to ask. All right, that we can gain 11. Go Frogs. Right. Go Frogs, fellas. See you.